folks and welcome to the channel if you're new and if you're a regular viewer welcome back I'm Kenzie Retro welcome to another edition of Kenzie Retro's top tens and um, this is number two of my uh, uh, starter series uh, for 2019 uh, um, my first list I covered my top 10 games of the year what about tackling the big screen? Lights, camera, action. My top 10 films 2018. It had to have a 2018 initial release date. So that's pretty much it. It, it had to have a 2018 worldwide release date and Obviously, I've had to have watched the film in order for it to be eligible for the list. That way, it can be more in-depth if I can. So, now just before I get started, I'm gonna get a couple. I'm gonna get a few films out of the way first. Uh, first off, it's films that I haven't actually seen but want to get round to seeing. Uh, Wrinkle in Time, Red Sparrow, Isle of Dogs, A Star is Born. Yes, I still haven't seen A Star is Born, yet, guys. Um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and Aquaman. Uh, the last two are in cinemas right now, so hopefully I'll get around to seeing them at some point. Uh, a few dishonorable mentions uh, out of the gates. Well, uh, Early Man, I like, the, I like the fact that we've got Ardman back, but it was basically England versus Germany. That's all it was. It was basically England versus Germany in the Stone Age. Solo, Star Wars film. It had its moments, don't get me wrong, but one thing that really threw me off was they didn't waste much time getting into a romantic subplot. And then Peter Rabbit. Ooh. Again, there were moments I liked, but... Really, you had a flock of birds with their take on Fort Miners Remember the Name? Really? And then you've got the rabbit celebrating when you've got Mr. McGregor uh, with a blackberry allergy. And unsurprisingly the film got called unsurprisingly the filmmakers got called out on it because um making fun of somebody's allergies not the best thing in the world to be doing anyway let's not waste any more time and let's get into the top 10. number 10 oh well the films i just mentioned that's just a third of the number of films that were on my list. Well, that's, well, <laughs> let's put it this way. My top 10, three dishonorable mentions. I had a short list of nearly 30 films. So you can imagine putting it into a top 10 wasn't exactly gonna be the easiest task. But nevertheless, I managed. Focus camera, thank you. And let's get into the top 10. Number 10, The Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Yeah, it's pronounced Grindel... Grindel? It's pronounced Grindelwald, not Grindelwald, as I've been pronouncing it so many times before. But nevertheless, Crimes of Grindelwald. Johnny Depp, fantastic as Grindelwald. Uh, Jude Law as a young Aldous Dumbledore. We go back to Hogwarts. And we've got, and we've got the whole gang together. Um... So let's see, the gang would be um, me, Chloe, Rose, and Tom. Oh, oh so, so, sorry, I, I mean, I mean, Mute, uh, Kowalski, Queenie, and uh, Tina. Yeah, yeah, the, w yeah. I've got a group chat on um, on Facebook where uh, me as Kowalski, because he's my favourite character, Tom as Mute, Chloe as Tina, and Rose as uh, Queenie. And the group chat, Butterheads! <laughs> Uh, I can't wait to see them in, uh, can't wait to see them in Corrington. It's been, it's been a year since I last saw them. Oh, my word, what a year ahead we have in store. I definitely plan on, uh, visiting them 
when I can. Anyway. Anyway, back to the film. I felt like a kid on Christmas morning. The fact that we were back in Hogwarts with that iconic score from John Williams. Absolutely amazing. Twist at the end? Ooh, boy. I won't say anything because it's pretty major for the rest of the Fantastic Beasts series. Not to mention the fact that there's also... Um, uh, if you remember Nagini from the Harry Potter films, well, turns out Nagini was a human before becoming a snake. Which I find actually pretty cool. So overall, a great film. Great twist at the end. Nobody saw it coming. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. I was like, what just happened? But anyway, on to number nine. And it's the first of our Marvel offerings today. And it's Deadpool 2. Now, the reason I say first of our Marvel offerings, because at the moment, Deadpool and the X-Men still ain't part of the MCU. But with the fact that Disney are going to be acquiring the film properties of Fox... It's only going to be a matter of time before we get Deadpool and the X-Men and the Fantastic Four while we're at it in the MCU. My word, what a crossover that would be. X-Men, Fantastic Four, Avengers. Oh, that would be so good. But anyway, how do you improve on what's already perfect? Just ask Deadpool 2. So many jabs at so many things. Not to mention the fact a quick jab at uh, Wolverine. <laughs> uh, yeah, Logan was my top, uh, number one film of 2017. When I did that list. And that was before the... And I did that list before The Greatest Showman came out. Which is why, now, when it comes to doing these sort of lists. Top 10 films, top 10 games, top 10 channel moments. I'm, I wait until the start of the new year before carrying that out. Anyway, X-Force, Juggernaut, you got Colossus and uh, Megasonic Teenage Warhead. Possibly the coolest name ever. <laughs> oh, such a great film. Laughs and laughs galore and... Even a couple of jabs at Frozen. Papa, can you hear me? Do you want to build a snowman? Why do those two songs sound so familiar? <laughs> oh, but anyway, definitely one I'd recommend. And uh, I actually got the Deadpool box set for uh, my best friend Paige, who, don't worry, you'll see her again on my channel this year. Don't you worry, I'll be sure to have my best friend back on my channel at some point. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, Deadpool 2, what I highly recommend. Get the box set. A couple of scenes in particular, I would avoid the supercut. I would I would just watch the theatrical version for those scenes in particular, and you'll understand why. Number 8. <clears throat> <clears throat> I see a little silhouette of a man, Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the Fandango, Thunderbolt and Lightning, very, very frightening me. Galileo, 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 Figaro. <laughs> oh, of course, Bohemian Rhapsody, ladies and gentlemen, what a fantastic film. With it being a biopic, there's bound to be historical inaccuracies, but to me, I went to see it just because I wanted to see how they were going to portray the life of Freddie Mercury, and they did not disappoint. Again, like I say, minus the historical inaccuracies, which I won't get into, because that's... Mm. Anyway, uh, song choice is fantastic. Uh, the guy that played Freddie Mercury himself... Such a fantastic job. 
and I was I was in the cinema screen. I was I was in the screening. Uh, and my goodness me, it did not disappoint. That live the live aid scene at the end as well. It was. It felt like I was there. Now some of my older friends, they know who they are. A couple of my older friends were actually at Live Aid for that show. And my goodness, I feel like I say the noise from the crowd, it felt like I was there. And I wasn't even alive in 1985. I was born in 93, eight years after the events of Live Aid. And two years after um, Freddie Mercury sadly passed away from AIDS. One of my favorite one of my favorite songs from Queen is uh, "These Are the Days of Our Lives." I might do that one for my Music Monday at some point. Stay tuned. But again, one I highly recommend, especially if you're a Queen fan or you just want to know more about the life of Freddie Mercury. Definitely give this one a watch. Don't be too surprised if you end up singing along with "I See a Little Silhouette of a Man." <laughs> Anyway, from one technically musical, we'll call it a bi we'll leave it as a biopic. From one piece of music to another, and it's the return of Mary Poppins at number seven. Well, well the official title is Mary Poppins Returns. <sighs> wow. Such a great film. 50 plus years since we first saw Mary Poppins. Julie Andrews, Dick Van Dyke, Angela Lansbury, to name a few. Fantastic. And how do you follow that up? Only having one of the biggest Broadway stars in the world right now, Lin-Manuel Miranda, as Bert. Ben Wishaw as uh, Jack, um, no, Michael. Jane and Michael. Why did I say Jack? Anyway. Uh, Jane and Michael. Uh, still going strong. Uh, Michael's wife passing away. And uh, their house on the verge of uh, being um, repossessed. Until, of course, Mary Poppins comes along. And all manner of magic, chaos and nonsense ensues. As far as sequels are concerned to a beloved classic, practically perfect in every way. Yes, I know it's cheesy to use a line from the film, but how can I not? How can I not? The songs are fantastic. I mean, and there was me singing along with Lin-Manuel Miranda underneath the lovely London sky. Such an amazing film. Great music numbers. The animation as well. Incredible. And overall, one that, one for the briefest of moments, was able to recapture my childhood. And this is one of the many films I went to see with my friend, with, with Paige. And... It's just, I don't even know. But the, but the sad thing about the day I went to see, the sad thing I went to, the sad thing about the day I went to see Mary Poppins Returns with my friend Paige, that was the day that my grand passed away. But I didn't receive the news until the Saturday night. It's been it's been just over a week now, and things haven't exactly been that easy for me. For the past few days, I've not been able to get to sleep till at least five a.m. Not eating properly, not sleeping properly. But at the end of the day. Couldn't be more thankful for the love and support that I've had from those around me, especially my best friend, Paige. Yeah. 
words don't do justice how much I love my best friend. The fact that she's always been there for me and I've always been there for her. It's what's made our friendship so special. Anyway, back to the top 10 there. Number six. A113. Pixar Easter eggs. No capes! And possibly the most hilarious scene in all of Pixar history. I mentioned it in my top 10 games of 2018. Incredibles 2. 14 years, Pixar! Worth the wait. It's another film I went to see uh, with Paige. And we were just sitting there, just, just laughing so hard that we, I think there were a few things that we ended up, ended up missing, but that scene, Jack-Jack versus Raccoon, best scene in all of Pixar, in my opinion anyway. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite Pixar scene is. Green Slaver is the antagonist. But as far as the mastermind behind Screen Slaver, I, ca I called it with I called it in the first like 15 minutes. I called it as to who the mastermind was within the first 15 minutes of the film. And when the reveal happened, I was like, called it. How on earth, I mean, yes, that does dock off a couple of points for it as far as, as far as it being too predictable is concerned. But Beggar's Bully, still a great film. Number five, another Disney offering. And spoiler alert, it won't be the last on this list. Christopher Robin. From the very start of the film, the opening credits, the music, I was instantly transported back to my childhood, which a lot of these films ended up doing. Mary Poppins, Incredibles, and now Christopher Robin. Did I go and see this with Paige? Yeah, absolutely. Such a great day, and actually, what I'm going to do do is once I play this okay so this music is good so there I'm just looking for focusing there it is that's our, that's our favourite photo together. And that was the day we went to see Christopher Robin. And it just so happens that what does Paige go and do? She goes and makes a collage on Facebook. And... And, and, and there you go. She has that, and she says, 2018 has definitely been one hell of a year, but I want to say thank you to these guys. I love these guys so much, and let's hope 2019 is a little kinder to us all. And with, with some of the things that, with some of the things that Paige has gone through this year, it's, um, I really hope things get better for her as well, and. And, and like I said earlier, the love I have for Paige is just unreal. Couldn't be more thankful for someone like Paige in my life. Anyway, Christopher Robin. Uh, it's an older Christopher Robin, to be exact, uh, played by Ewan McGregor. 
Uh, so busy focusing on his work that he doesn't have much time for his family. And then Winnie the Pooh comes along with all his friends. The wonderful thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are wonderful things. The tops are made out of rubber. The balance are made out of springs. The flouncy, county, pouncy, bouncy, fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about Tiggers is I'm the only one. I'm the only one. <laughs> Tigger's still as bouncy as ever, and just wow. And then uh, Pooh and his friends come along and help Christopher Robin recapture his childhood, and we'll just leave it at that. Such a great film. Definitely one I rec definitely one I'd recommend guys. Definitely one I'd recommend. Number four now, shock and surprise, another one I went to go and see pa uh, with Paige. Um but <sighs> Easter eggs galore. Marvin the Martian, the DeLorean, King Kong, Godzilla, um Alan Silvestri's Back to the Future music cues, The Shining, Halo, Overwatch, The Iron Giant. I mean, I could I could list those Easter eggs all day. Battletoads, Ready Player One. A future where James Halliday has created something called the Oasis and he has a excuse me and he has this contest where the winner of the contest gets his gets Halliday's shares in the company that he created which are worth half a trillion dollars and for that you need to find three keys and absolutely amazing like, like I say I could list the Easter eggs off all day Goro the chest burster from Alien The, uh, the, mu the music choices were just spot on. And, I mean, let's face it. I would love something like that to become a reality. I genuinely would. I would love to see that become a reality. But, we'll just need to wait and see. Again, one I, one I highly recommend. But now we're into the business end. Top three. And number three. Essentially from the films I've seen, essentially from the films I've seen, I ended up having to, I ended up having to, I ended up having to slice that list in half just like that. Oh, um, sorry, are people still recovering from that scene? To be more precise, Avengers Infinity War. Ten years we've been building up to this. And we've got the climax in just under four months from now. April 26th is the day it officially comes out. Avengers Endgame. And I did a reaction to that trailer, so you can check that out on my channel. <sighs> my goodness me. 10 years, and this is how it's done. You have everyone, Doctor Strange, Thor, the original Avengers, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man, Black Panther, Winter Soldier, 
Falcon, Bucky. Bucky is the Winter Soldier. Um, and Rhodey as well. Not to mention... Fear me and rejoice. You are about to die at the hands of the children of Thanos. Ebony Maw, so amazing. But, like I say, that scene... I had just recovered from that scene until one of my honourable mentions pops up, which I'll get into shortly. Such a great film, full of heartache, full of laughter, full of epic moments, especially BRING ME THANOS! And that, that score during that moment in particular, I was just like, LET'S FREAKING GO! And now, on to number two. Creed 2, to be exact. A film with the number two at number two. I think it was inevitable that was going to happen at some point. I mean, I've had so many twos today. I've had Mary Poppins, well, Fantastic Beasts 2, Crimes of Grindelwald, Mary Poppins 2, Mary Poppins Returns, Deadpool 2, Incredibles 2, and now I've got Creed 2. Is there going to be a number, is there going to be a two to top the list? Maybe the iconic BBC 2? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. Anyway, Creed 2. Talk about personal. Ivan Drago's son against Adonis Creed. The scene where Rocky and Dr Ivan in that cafe for the first time in over 20, in, in nearly 30 years, to be, well, in over 30 years. <sighs> Beggar's belief. That scene was intense. Just that one particular moment stood out for me. This is all he knows. If that's not a sign of intimidation, I don't know what is. Acting on point, music on point, and just the story in general, all on point. If you're a boxing fan and you like the Rocky films, definitely one I'd recommend. For me, just because of how personal this was, this, for me, eclipses Rocky IV as my favourite film in the franchise. Yes, I know Creed's technically a spin-off, but it's still part of the Rocky universe, damn it, so it's my... So I'll, I'm, I'm closing it as part of the Rocky franchise, and in my opinion, this is better than Rocky IV. But I still stand by Rocky IV having the best training montage. I still stand by that. But film as a whole, Creed 2 tops it. Worthy successor to the first film? Absolutely. Now on to the honorable mentions, and I'm just going to say a couple of quick things about them. Uh, uh, Black Panther, Wakanda forever, need I say more beyond that. Quiet Place, very unique take on the horror genre. Ant-Man and the Wasp, I just recovered from the end of Infinity War Marvel. Too soon! Come on! Midnight Sun. Not so much a happy ending, but still a great film all around. Tomb Raider. This is how you do a video game film, guys. Johnny English Strikes Again. Great climax to the trilogy. Pokemon The Power of Us. Focused on Lugia again. 
like the second film in the uh, Pokemon, like the second ever Pokemon film. Uh, wow, good bit of so good bit of uh, social commentary in there. Uh, some environmental message in there as well, without being too preachy. Venom, wow, this is how Venom should have been done in Spider-Man Three. Love Simon, the most realistic depiction of the LGBT community I've ever seen, and. Uh, let's see, um, Johnny English I went to see with Paige, and Love, Simon I went to see with Paige. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, couldn't put it into the top 10 because there were some moments where I just thought seriously, looking back on it. But apart from that, great film all around. The actress that played uh, the granddaughter, she did a really good job with her character, and Halloween... 40 years after the first film. And would you believe it, they are... And would you believe it, they've got another one on the way. When are they finally going to kill Michael Myers? Michael Myers is not human at this point! Mind you, the fact has been, the fact has been going for 40 years. And we... And hey, John Carpenter back with the music. Jamie Lee Curtis back. And OG Michael Myers... As in, the original actor that played Michael Myers. Fantastic. That's how good this year has been as far as films are concerned. I mean, just from what I've mentioned. I've already mentioned... Nine films in my top ten. Eleven honourable mentions. Three dishonourable mentions. Twenty-three films. Plus another six that I still haven't seen yet. My number one's going to bring that up to 30, so never mind halving the list, I had to slice it into three. But anyway, a recap of the top ten before I get into my number one. Number ten, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Number nine, Deadpool 2. Number eight, Bohemian Rhapsody. Number seven, Mary Poppins Returns. Number six, The Incredibles 2. Number five, Christopher Robin. Number four, Ready Player One. Number three, Avengers Infinity War. And number two, Creed. Two. I should have mentioned with regards to uh, Avengers. If there's multiple MCU films released in the year, I limit myself to just one. I limit myself to one film in the MCU every year. But number one, it's a Disney film. And again, Sequel done right. I'm titling it Wreck It Ralph 2, but the official title for it is Ralph Breaks the Internet. They should have it the other way around Wreck It Ralph 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Pretty much does what it says in the tin. And. Wow. Again. Massive Easter egg hunt, especially when they head to Oh My Disney. But the but overall, it's a case of Vanellope. It's a case of Vanellope wanting something else outside of Sugar Rush. So Ralph and Vanellope head to the internet to not only find, not only get a steering wheel for um, for Sugar Rush because the last one is broken, but how can I talk about this film without going into spoiler territory? The scenes. With Vanellope and the Disney princesses lives up to the hype. It did not disappoint. I mean, what, uh, another one of my close friends, Shanae McCabe. She posted the, a clip of the film, which was featured in one of the trailers. Merida. Nobody understanding what she was saying. Shanae said, pretty much me in America right now. And I just thought, 
Could that be any more accurate? And then she's from the other studio. Quick, I mean, they, they had a jab at Pixar. <laughs> oh, that was so good. And then on top of that, they, um, do you have magic hands? Were you, uh, was it poisoned, cursed? Do you have animal, animal friends? Uh, do you have animals uh, kidnapped or enslaved? Yada, yada, yada. Does anyone assume your problems? Um, does anyone? Does nobody assume you managed to get your problems solved just because you have a big, strong man in your life? Yes. What's up with that? I mean, that is just brilliant. That is just brilliant. And they only went and did it. Be I mean, because Marvel is now owned by, because the Marvel Cinematic Universe is owned by Disney. Disney only went and got a Stanley cameo in the film. They only went and got a Stanley cameo. <laughs> and I saw the film essentially opening weekend. Like literally two days after I went to see Creed 2. I went to see Creed 2 on the Friday. And I went to see Wreck It Ralph 2 on the Sunday. And like I say, they, they only went and got a Stanley Cameo there. I find it pretty coincidental that both of my number ones, as far as my no number one game and number one movie are concerned, they both they both involve Marvel in some way. Primarily because Stanley Cameo, the Spider-Man game on PS4. Which, by the way, I'm going to get back into, guys. Don't you worry, I've got the DLC, so I'll be covering that as well. And then, I was going to say, that Stanley cameo, I was just so happy at that point. And then Vanellope ends up getting her own Disney princess style song. I mean, what more could you ask for from this film? This is how you do a sequel to an underrated film. And Disney don't normally do sequels, let alone sequels. They don't normally do theatrical sequels. But beggars belief, this is a sequel done right. And unsurprisingly, people are going to be excited about Frozen Two coming out later this year. We've got a lot of Disney pro we've got a lot of Disney projects coming up uh, this year, which. I will get into in my top 10 most anticipated films of 2019. Have we an attempt? I don't think I've actually attempted to rank them yet. But nevertheless, that is my top 10 films of 2018. Are there any films that I missed out and any films that you would recommend? Yeah. That's two lists I haven't even ranked yet. Two lists I haven't even ranked. Anyway, I'll uh, leave it at that. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And for new baptisms, follow me on this channel. Hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the live Facebook notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. I have got my top 10 films of 2018 on the left and my top 10 playlist on the right. Top 10 channel moments of 2018 next. So I'll see you shortly for that. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. Stay faithful as always.